Hi everyone, Brian from Bearable Traders. Wednesday, August 21st. Just going to do a midweek recap here. Uh, just see where we are. We had a pretty good day today. You can see all the indexes were up. Had a strong day on the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P all looking good today. Looking good yesterday too. Back, back in the saddle, as they say, with uh, <clears throat> lots of stocks moving higher today. Lots of green. So we had some uh, little bit of earnings this week. A lot of retailers coming in. They're all Home Depot, Lowe's, KSS. In, um, had uh, Nordstrom's after the close today. Foot Locker on Friday, I believe. So and the L Brands, I believe, after the the close here today as well. So yeah, the consumer seems to still be spending. Everything still looks not too bad from the consumer point of view. So. I guess we'll uh, we'll see how the week closes out with the remainder of the uh, earnings reports coming up here. But, uh, you know, let's uh, take a look at what the groups look like so far. Again, everything, lots of green bars here for the week, for the day today. Uh, utilities, um, you know, still strong, safety trade. Uh, healthcare, safety trade. And on a one month performance, we still, we're still down a little bit here, but uh, you can see uh, healthcare and utilities safety trades are still in play. Conglomerates, I think you can kind of consider to be a safety trade too. So, uh, <clears throat> but it's been a shift back to, back to uh, technology and a little bit of risk on this week. So we're making up some ground. So let's just take a look here at the 10 year treasury. I think we dipped again below the 10 year rate dipped a little again below the two year rate. So we keep talking about this inversion of the yield curve. Last week we had a conniption in the market with an 800 point drop. Uh, this week we had a 240 point uh, increase. So I guess, uh, you know, that, uh, that scare only lasted once and, and uh, now it's forgotten. So Kind of weird. Anyway, it looks like we're putting in a bit of a double bottom on that 10-year treasury. So maybe the yields uh, on this are um, are going to start to head higher. And you can see here we're getting a bit of an inside week right now on the weekly. <clears throat> so we'll see if I have a reversal and get a and maybe a T, uh, let's see, TLT would be the play on that. Dow today have had a bit of a choppy week so far. Um, pulled back from the high today. You can see RSI strengthening. You can see here the volume is dropping off, and I think that's sort of indicative. You know, late summer, probably people squeezing in their holidays at the end of the end of the summer vacation. Of just the volumes just drying up, and I think we're going to see that as we go through uh, all the indexes here. IWM. IWM actually had a nice uh, nice. Uh, day today it looked a lot stronger than maybe some of the other averages you can see it finished fairly close to the high pulled back and then came right back up again almost made a, a dragonfly doji but you can see here it uh, it looks not it looks not too bad and actually I took uh, right at the close I took some TNA trade which is a small cap ETF just because I like the way it kind of went out. It's a, a back above, looks like it's back above or right at that 200 day moving average. RSI is coming up. Uh, volume is a little bit better than yesterday. <clears throat> so MACD turning up too. I think it looks kind of positive. Skip over the weekly, the Qs, kind of an indecision doji here. Just uh, army cross and right at the 50 day. So you know, we just we may just end up chopping in this range. I don't know. Uh, don't think I think there's enough sort of skepticism and worry on the street with the European situation. The German um, trying to sell some 30-year bonds that uh, with negative interest rates. I don't think that went very well. And uh, yeah, just the general malaise in the European economy and what's going to happen there and whether it's going to kind of spill over into other parts of the world. Um, so kind of some cross currents, but then you've got uh, U.S. consumers still spending well. Um, economy still, still seems to be good. So <clears throat> um, again, SPY kind of same thing. We had a pretty narrow trading range today, and you can see here volume again dropping off. Not a lot of conviction one way or another today for the SPY. Um, the dollar, again, not a, not a lot of conviction one way or another either on increasing volume, but... Uh, 
Yeah, and the VIX, of course, uh, again, down today just because we had another good day on the market. Let's take a look at what we got for actives. Don't have a lot right now just because I feel like things are choppy. Gold, I'm not in, but I'm kind of watching to see what it, it's going to do. It looks looks really toppy and kind of heavy here. It did pull back today and then and then sort of come back up. It was a red day. You can see here, look at the volume. The volume was almost nil. Um, RSI is rolling over a little bit. Lyft I took a position on. I was talking about that on the weekend. Uh, their, um, you know, their lockup was, uh, came off uh, and uh, there's a lot of stocks became free trading. Maybe I wasn't, didn't talk about it on my video on the weekend. I talked about it in the room and I thought it might, uh, you know, it looked like it held this 50 level. So I thought, you know, I'll take a, a shot at it and maybe hold on to a very small position. So I got a small position in that right now. And T I've taken a small position in. Just it's going to be a longer term hold unless we really start to get a failure here. But I, you know, it's paying a 6% dividend. So I like, kind of like that one. Um, just as if you want to put some money into something and just kind of not to worry too much about it, hopefully. Um, see, we got on watch. Baba, Baba kind of came up here. Um, and it came right back up to this previous level of resistance, and now it's rejected a bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it looks like it's uh, it may just uh, consolidate here. This is a good opportunity to sell to sell calls. Um, <clears throat> you know, you can sell a few calls on this pop right up. Uh, sell 180 calls, and uh, you know it would be an opportunity to. Uh, to collect some premium and knowing that there's probably going to be some uh, resistance here at 180 for it to go through. KBH, KBH, I was looking at KBH because a home builder, this one particular home builder seem, and I think there's probably a, a few others that are probably looking at breaking out and it's probably because of the low interest rates. Um, and uh, it does definitely look like it's uh, breaking out here at uh, from a 28 level. And you know we could be good up to uh, at least at least this 30 level. So I'm going to look to see if I can get uh, on this on a pullback tomorrow. Maybe we'll get a bit of a pullback under 28, uh, and I'll look to try and uh, maybe take position. Ideally, I'd like to get in around uh, maybe 27.50. But I'm going to set an alert, and I'll watch to see if we can get a pullback tomorrow on uh, KBH. Chinese internet sort of just hanging around the 50-day uh, um, after that nice run with JD and, and Baba and Baidu. Um, I'm watching Labu. It, uh, I'm kind of thinking about this as a biotech, but it just uh, it's still sort of on. If I could draw a line there, I'd draw um, <clears throat> you know draw a line. It, it, it needs to really start to break out and. Uh, if it can get kind of above 42, maybe we'll be maybe we'll look at that for a uh, opportunity to take a trade to the long side. Again, I'll set us setting an alert for that. And the other one I was looking at was PayPal. PayPal broke out today, so you had this big, you know, sell off, and I think that they related to earnings as well, both Square earnings and PayPal earnings, um, sort of a double gap down. Uh, we've closed this one gap definitely. From here to here, uh, put in a nice double bottom. Should, should have got involved with this earlier, but now it seems to be kind of breaking out from this 108 level. Um, so I wouldn't be chasing it here, but maybe if we can get a pullback uh, to 107.50 or 108, might be worth a shot. Silver kind of just hanging around. Um, Square Square's not quite behaving as nicely as uh, PayPal. This is kind of an indecision candle. Nothing much to see there. UNG just having some, you know, struggles here. I'm been keeping an eye on it. I do like to trade this natural gas, but I'm just not seeing any a good setup here on this to take an entry. USO had a down day today. Kind of came up against this um, this level of priors resistance and rejected so again it looks a little little choppy if we drew a line down here it looked like it tried to break out from a tr from this trend line so I'll try I'll draw one here just to show you what I'm talking about 
So you can see here, had this nice trend line down, looked like gapped up, and it looked like it was going to uh, break this trend line, but then we ended up pulling back here. So, uh, so it kind of invalidated that move today. So we'll uh, we'll see where that goes. I suspect we may uh, may still continue to just chop in this area. And uh, I don't think I've got Nugget up here. Let's take a quick look at Nugget. Nugget looks, again, it looks, if you drew a line along here, it looks like it kind of tried to break out, but now it's uh, doing a bit of a pullback. We're getting, in, got an inside day today. Again, volume not very impressive by any stretch of the imagination. So just kind of keep an eye on that and see where it goes. But yeah, so that's it. Um, my book. How to Swing Trade on Amazon if you haven't checked it out. And hope you are all enjoying the evening, Wednesday evening. We'll see everyone in the Bearable Trading Room if you're going to join us in the Day Trading Room on Thursday morning. Have a good one, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening.